All right, guys. So, doing SketchUp. Um, let me get this going here. There's a couple things I wanted to show you guys when you actually launch into it. So, um, right now, until I get my license in, I'm using the 2017 version of Make. This is completely free to you get to use. Um, I would recommend using this at least for this class. You don't have to pay for it yet. Um, eventually, you might want to go in and actually bump it up to use uh, SketchUp Make, or sorry, purchase one of the licensed versions. Student version is 55 a year, and you have to provide your campus identification of some kind. Um, they list it pretty comprehensively on the site, and usually it takes about 24 to 48 hours to get that through. So get started on that. Anyway, so launching into SketchUp Make, um, one of the first things it's going to do, and I, was, I restarted it because I was hoping it would still show that option, is it's going to have you select a template. So I've got the template option right here open. Uh, for this, I'm going to select... Um, <clears throat> You can do either of the, either of these works fine. Um, I kind of prefer this one just because I like the neutral gray background, um, and you can change that. Um, there's not a significant di difference between the simple template and the architectural design, um, so you it's completely fine if you go with this one. Uh, so I'm going to hit start using SketchUp, and I might have to resize it once it opens. Yeah, one sec. Okay. Um, I think I got it. okay. So, um, we're in SketchUp here. Um, let's go over some controls real quick. So, middle mouse button, that's um, doo -doo -doo right here. Um, if you click on out here, you can rotate around a point. It's weird that it's stuttering. Um, so, you can rotate around a point like that. You can press H on the keyboard or... Something's going on. Guess I'm losing my mind. All right, so um, let's see. Spacebar, is it? Well, hold on. Okay, I think they're intentionally disabling stuff in here um, to make it harder to use because none of the keyboard commands are working, or it's my computer. So I'm just going to use the, the user interface uh, for now, and then um, I can. I'll, I will point out what the key, or I'll mention what the keyboard commands are. So we'll just go with that and we'll start working here. So um, selection tools, this first arrow right here. Um, if you completely surround something, you can select all of it. If you only click a, go right to left and only select a little tiny bit, you can select something. So if I did that same selection left to right like that, wouldn't select anything here. But if I go right to left, grab that guy. All right. So left to right has to go all the way around the things you're selecting. Um, let's see, you can also single click, hold down shift to toggle click, um, control click will add to selection, and uh, what is it, control shift will deselect only. Um, so there's a couple different options you have there as far as your selection. Um, the next option up here is the eraser tool, um, and that operates as exactly as you would expect. Um, the next one here is the pen tool, and this one's kind of my favorite tool. I'm going to be using this one a lot. Um, you just click, and it places points. And anytime SketchUp has a area that can be filled in um, in a two-dimensional way, um, it will fill that space in. So if you have this area right here, it'll fill that in. If I was to draw another tiny space right here, It'll, if I can complete that, it'll fill that in. Um, so you do have ways to just kind of make sure that things are going correctly. And then again, we can zoom in on this. And I can go left to right, only selects that. Right to left selects pretty much everything here. Um, all your surfaces and everything you're working with inside of SketchUp is going to be made up of basically a line, which is what this is and those lines will define that surface. So keep that in mind anytime you see something go away. Like right here, I just deleted that line, now it's kind of see-through, right? If you ever need to get a surface to come back, you redraw one of the lines, and it'll refill that in, okay? All right, so moving on, um, let's see. There is view, let's see, or sorry, camera, zoom extents, and that'll zoom you out. It kind of resets your view. It's kind of handy for things like where I was. Um, 
let's see, so there's Arc Tools. Um, there's a couple different ones here that you can just basically use to create arcs. Uh, and then Rectangle Tool, um, you get the idea here. Um, basically just draws rectangles. Um, circle Tool draws circles. And polygon tool, you have to. Oh, it's behind my image here. Sneak this down. You can see right here that there says six sides. So if I start this tool and then come down here and oh, let me start it again, um, and just type something like ten, hit enter. Now I've got a ten-sided polygon. Click the tool again, hit three, enter. Now I'm drawing triangles. All right. So you can modify all these tools. Um, let me turn myself off um, so you can see what's going on here. Um, so when I've got all these different tools here, along with being able to set the number of faces there, I can set actual dimensions. So if I start drawing this line and move up, you can see down here that it says what that distance is. So I could try and figure out one foot here, or I could just type one foot and hit enter, and it's going to draw that in. And then I come down, click there, and I'm good on that surface right there. So, um, let's see. So those are kind of the basic tools here in SketchUp. And then there's a couple more advanced ones. Um, so let me get rid of this guy. And let me draw a rectangle here again. Which I could have done with the rectangle tool, but I like the pen tool. Alright, so the next tool here is the push-pull tool. And this one you're going to end up using a lot. Um, and what it does is basically any surface you hover over, you click on it and move it out, and it's going to kind of just basically extend or extrude that surface. Okay? If I had another surface on top of here that's separated by another area, basically by more lines and a separate surface, I can also use the push-pull tool there. Um, similar to that is the offset tool, so this takes the f a face and offsets it inwards and then you can switch back to the push-pull tool and pull something out from there. And so I could kind of switch back between these two tools and just kind of do weird stuff here. So there's a couple things you can do with that. All right. Next up is the move tool. So um, with the move tool um, I always recommend actually selecting things before you do any moves. Um, if you don't, it kind of ends up being hard to select what you're trying to do. Um, so what I would do is, if I wanted to move this entire thing right here, I'd triple click on this, uh, which is another selection method. So you've got your single, you've got your double, and then you've got your triple. So single's going to select what you click on, double's going to select the thing you clicked on, and everything attached to it, immediate, like one step deep. Um, and then... Uh, triple click is going to select everything that's available and connected to that object. All right. So if I wanted to use the move tool, I can click on that and then start moving it in any direction. And again, you can see down here in the bottom right, I've got a distance, so I can set the des distance to say go. Um, oh, let me move that two feet, or I can go say seven feet this way. Um, now SketchUp will generally try and stay on sort of a flat axis, so if I go off this way without doing anything, it's not going to drop me below the origin into the negative vertical space, all right? So you do, you can sometimes rely on that, but don't entirely rely on that, okay? Um, let's see. Um, and of course, the uh, distance tools work with all the other things, so if I wanted to draw a rectangle, I could set, uh, say, three foot comma one foot and I would draw a three foot by one foot rectangle right there. If I wanted to offset this out two feet, I could enter two feet. Um, if I wanted to draw a circle, now the circle you kind of have to keep an eye out for, but basically in this case it's going to use the radius. Um, so keep that in mind that you're using radius and not the diameter. So if I want a two foot diameter circle, I would do a one foot radius. Um, and then same thing kind of with the polygon, though you're going to one of the faces there um, when you do that. Um, some other things. When you're moving or going, like, a, let's say I was drawing off in this direction. Uh, control. 
So let's say I moved off this direction and then I want to draw up. And I can't quite find up. What I can do is I can hit up on the mouse or on the uh, keyboard and it's going to snap me to that up axis. You can see the blue axis right here is up down. Um, I can do left and it'll snap me to the green and I can do right and it'll snap me to red. Um, up and down uh, should both be blue. Yeah, that's just a reference. Um, so that same control works with whatever you're doing. So if I wanted to take this selection and I wanted to move it up, I could hit the up arrow and constrain it to up. Um, or I could hit one of the other arrows saying constrain it to red axis when I do that movement. So make sure you're using those tools to ensure that all your lines are straight and that you're keeping everything organized in here. Um, you're looking for real clear lines, no over, no weird legs, just slightly offset overlap, stuff like that. Um, let's see, same thing. Uh, we have the rotation tool. Um, and so I can click on that, click on a reference point, and then you can see that the angle will change as I rotate around. Um, you can lock the angle that you want to select at. So let's say that whatever for whatever reason, I want to rotate at uh, this angle. Um, I can hold down shift while I do that and then move this. Uh, it's not going to let me do that. You can do it right here and it'll let me select kind of where I want to do this at um, on, that fit, on that constrained face. Or in this case, I can also hit the arrow keys and lock it to one of the specific axes. Um, so there's red, green, or blue. And those are things that you normally wouldn't be able to set yourself manually. It's going to kind of orient itself to whatever face. Um, and then same thing, click a reference point and then rotate. Um, scale, generally I don't use scale very much for anything because you're usually measuring everything you want to do. And only in a couple rare circumstances are you going to end up needing to scale something. And because it's not precise, you generally want to avoid it. Um, but it does have a couple options. If you click on one spot, it'll go from that spot to the opposite. If you hold down shift, it'll do it kind of parallel in all directions. Or sorry, if you hold down control, it'll do it in all directions. Um, if you hold down, let's see. There's one. Yeah, it was uh, control and shift. It'll do it around the center point. Um, so you do have a couple different ways where you can kind of scale things. Um, but again, I generally would avoid recommending, I would recommend avoiding that tool. Um, tape measure is handy. Um, anytime you're placing a tape measure, don't click on a corner and do something like that. You end up with a bunch of weird little extra lines. Uh, and it's not showing, you see that little tiny, it's hard to see it. It's that little tiny square that's right there. Um, if I move, oops, if I move all this out of the way, you can see that it leaves these little tiny <coughs> floating plus signs everywhere um, and they're kind of annoying to deal with and hard to remove sometimes so I would recommend avoiding placing those instead use the tape measure tool hover over a line and it's gonna place a line like that you can also reference again so I can lock this to red axis say two feet I can lock this to the blue axis and say two feet and now I've got sort of a way to draw in a rectangle over here by locking this to the green axis and I can draw a two foot two referred square out in the middle of space like that. Um, and then of course we can push pull it. Now anytime you have thin lines like this um, where you have, see how I've got the bold lines or kind of the corners that are going around. Um, what I can do is I can actually click on this and erase this line and it's going to convert this into a single solid surface. Um, let's delete some of these real quick so we can see that. Um, so now I can click on this and it's one solid surface whereas this one here is not. Because this is not exploded right now I can actually select this as a single object um, and I can delete this face or this set of lines which would turn all of this into a face. Um, but if I was to take this and explode it, it's now going to be a whole bunch of different smaller um, segments of that circle. I can double click on it and I can select all the lines that make it up because it's not technically attached to that face. So if I tried to move this up, 
you would see that it's just going to let it go whereas if that line is still right there this is now still a face that's hooked or that's attached to all this uh, and now if I try to move this it's gonna do something weird because it doesn't like doing this yeah it's gonna do that which you kinda want to avoid alright um, let's see there are materials in here um, B is the keyboard uh, shortcut for that for I don't know a paint bucket I guess um, Mac users are going to have a noticeably different interface here for a couple things um, so if you bug me I will point out what those are um, but generally it's going to be that you guys have this this little arrow that I love so much right here is actually going to be a drop down next to the house here on your guys's interface um, so there are a couple weird changes like that um, within the materials menu here you have a couple different options here and you can jump through them so you've got brick concrete and all this stuff um, just click on a material it should appear right here and then you can place it um, if you select multiple things so if I select these three faces and then apply it it'll apply it to all of them while not applying it to others that are not selected um, when you have something named with one of these unique colors you can go to edit and you can actually drag the slider around here and modify the colors that are going on with that in case you need to actually just kind of customize things anytime you do that I would recommend actually specifically naming this once you've done that um, and that's more for setting things up for 3d rendering later on in the process all right um, so I would get in the habit now and I will show you guys kind of why you would want to do that later um, some of the other big concepts that we're going to be covering real quick I'll just kind of clear everything out there um, is working with groups versus components so if I have a two foot by two foot by six foot column here I can uh, well let's first do, mo do a move copy so you can select the move tool with that selected I'm going to move it off in this direction and I'm fine if it kind of sticks to the red axis. Now I'm going to hit control and I think this is option on Mac and it's going to allow me to duplicate. So I can duplicate this off and I'll type in 8 feet in that direction. Before I touch any other keys I can also do X5 let's say and it'll copy that a total of 5 times. So now I've got my first copy, second, third, fourth, and fifth based on that X5. Okay. So if you do need to do things where you're going to end up with a row that's going to be in a straight line very consistently like that, highly recommend using that. Now, I've got all these columns. What are we going to do with them? So this first one, I'm going to triple click on it. I'm going to do make component. And I'm going to leave that just at the default component name. I'm just going to hit create, and we're going to move on. This next one, I'm going to do the same thing. Triple click on it, make a group. And I'm just going to delete the rest of these because we don't need them. Now, I'm going to move copy these out, and I'm going to do, let's say, what I do, 8 feet, enter x4, so now I've got a couple copies of it there, all right? So what's the difference between a group and a component? Um, and I'm going to middle mouse right here, and it'll let me kind of jump around the screen. Um, should let me jump around the screen, there we go. Okay. So. Um, the difference between a group and a component, here's the group. If I go in here and I modify this group, so I take a, that little section in and I push pull this out, you can see that all the other elements in this group have not changed. Now if I was to go do that same change over here, and let's just do this right here, and you can see as I'm doing this that like all the other components are having the same changes highlighted in them. That same change has now appeared here in all of them. And if I drag that up, it's modified all of them at the same time. So why is that useful? Well, groups are great for doing things where it's a large single piece where you're not going to have a duplicate of it anywhere. Whereas a component is for something that should be um, fairly unique. So for things like a specific size of window, I would have that be a component. But the window pane inside, I would make with a group. Um, and that allows you to not have to save another component that is four foot by two foot window window pane. Um, then you just go window pane, 
or you create a group for the win to represent the window pane, a group to represent the frame itself, and then a component of those two groups. Um, and this will kind of make sense when I get into that demo. Um, but keep that in mind where these are all kind of, these are two s similar ideas, but they work differently. Um, and you can leverage that to your benefit. Now, another thing that you can do is when you have a material that, um, or you have a group or a component that is sort of blank and empty like that, um, what it's doing is it's using the default. And if you click on the face up here in the entity info, you can see that it has the default right here. So if I go in here and I apply, let's, let's use this brick again, um, and apply that there. And then I hit escape to get out of there. And then I choose a completely different color. Let's go with this right here. If I apply this to that component, it's only going to apply it to that component as if it were a group. So there is one small way where you can kind of leverage um, the default color for those. But as soon as I go in here, and let's uncheck that and apply that, it's going to override that default color. So you can leverage that default color a little bit in your project, um, but you're going to find really unique places where otherwise you're not going to be able to use it. Um, so anytime you create a component, it should show up here in your components menu. So here's Chris. He was the original guy that was standing in here when I started the demo. Um, he's still in here. Any component you load in is saved to SketchUp. And once you delete it, you can then purge it from the list here. Um, and this is that case where I think Mac users, you'll have to click this little down arrow. Uh, PC users, there's a purge on... Let me slide this over. There's a purge unused option. So this will get rid of any component that's not in the model. So Chris is gone. And then same idea here. If I go up to the materials menu, click on in model, um, it's showing me all the materials that are in here. And anything that doesn't have one of these little white triangles in the bottom corner, that's going to be something that uh, if it has the white triangle, it's in the model. If it doesn't, it's out. So I can now go in here and I can purge unused. Um, so let me bring myself back in here. Um, so super quick demo on basics of SketchUp. We're going to get into working kind of a lot more complex with it very soon. Um, but I wanted to go over those basics. Um, now, as, as for the purge unused thing right there, SketchUp kind of starts melting slowly, um, or it starts slowing down kind of once you hit 60 megabyte files, um, especially the older versions like Make 2017. Um, but usually by about 128 megabytes, your SketchUp file is trash and it's going to be very difficult to work with. So anytime it starts working slowly, um, what you want to do is you want to go into these menus here. You want to purge your unused components and then purge your materials and that'll free up that space. Say once you do that, and I've seen students' projects drop 90 something megabytes um, and make their computer just, it suddenly is a new project. Um, how do you get a huge file bullet like that? Um, SketchUp has the warehouse, and we'll do a whole thing on the warehouse. Um, let's search for a car. Um, and so you can use the 3D warehouse here to find things and then load them into your project. Um, you probably not. Oh, what? No. Um, some of them load faster than others. Let me hide that. Um, that one seemed to have not loaded at all. This one had a pop-up window. Um, so we've got this right here from the 3D warehouse. And can I load it in? Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, and so this lets you quickly go and go, just sit there and go, I need a couch for my model. So you could load up, oh, come on, I'll pause this, all right, we're back. So here's that 3D model of a car. So if I needed a car real quick, I could download a car. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> if I need a couch, if I need a dining table, I can bring all kinds of stuff in from the warehouse quickly and easily. 
um, by just using this search bar right here. Um, now keep in mind like a lot of this stuff is going to be kind of like okay and some of it's going to be kind of trash. Um, so you'll end up with let me see if I can find some. Here's a decent sofa. Um, so some sofas might look like this. If, again, this one ever loads. There we go. And for whatever reason, <laughs> this is a perfect example because it came in, it's either three inches tall, uh, or it's either like six inches tall, or this car is like way too big. Um, so that's a perfect illustration of you never know what you're going to get. Um, when you go to the warehouse. So let me see which one of these is. I think the couch is probably right though. Um, let me hide me. So the couch is about three foot tall, which is about right while I think this car is sitting on 48 inch rims. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, all right. Yeah. So there's, um, there is some variability about the quality of what you're working with when you get into the workshop. Um, but it's usually something where like, this is the one case where you'd want to use the scale tool that I told you not to use. So you could take this, um, what do we suppose it had 18, 18 inch rims, uh, 48.375. So 0.375, and that should get that to about the right scale for what we're looking for. Um, and now you've got a garage with a car in it. Um, so, that's my super quick demo crash course on SketchUp. I will be getting into next building a house and a couple other things, um, so stay tuned, and we will get more into this as the week progresses.